What's up, everybody? I'm Kevin. And I'm Sergey. And, and we, we are, are the Tabletop Warlords. Warlords. And today we're playing another game of Beyond the Gates of Antares, the best war game there ever was. Today is a special day because we've got a fever. And it's a Fort Fever. Fort Fever. Fort Fever. Yes, that's right. When we teased the fort many moons ago, we never used it because of logistical errors. It's a long battle report, and there's a plague about. But the fort's hiatus ends today, and we are having it on the field for the first fort-inspired scenarios. A while ago, we sent out a request to our viewers to send us fort scenario suggestions, and we made a bunch of fort scenarios based off of those suggestions for you guys to enjoy. Today, we'll be playing the first of these scenarios inspired by our viewers that we have lovingly referred to as Breach the Gate. I will be defending the wall and this gate as the proud Alberin, and I will be attempting to breach the gate with the Boromite Rock Fist. Now, in a scenario that revolves around a terrain piece so heavily, I, I assume the easiest way to describe this scenario will be to show you the table. But before we get to that beautiful battlefield, if you'd like to support our channel, the easiest way is to like this video, comment, and subscribe to the channel. If you want to support the channel even further, you can go ahead and hit the affiliate link right beneath this video. It'll take you to the Warlord store, and anything you purchase there will give the Tabletop Warlords, us, a small commission. But if you want to support our channel in the best way pan-humanly possible, you should join our Patreon campaign. Our patrons are literally the lifeblood of the studio. That was a lot of P words in rapid succession. It was. <laughs> She is again. The fort is back for your entertainment pleasures. I cannot wait to play this map. Like we said earlier, the scenario and the complexity therein is definitely better shown than just explained. As Sergey had said earlier, we are just representing a segment of the fort, and it is a four foot segment. So those uh, towers are exactly six inches across, the main wall segments are 12, and the gate combined, all three pieces are 12 as well. So that is going to completely uh, go from one end of the uh, short edge of the table to the other. To represent the structure of the base itself, uh, the wall has been set two feet off of my short end of the table as the defenders. And uh, that is so that we have uh, a little bit of a courtyard area to be able to maneuver around into. But more importantly, the entire point of Sergei's attack is to get as many units as he can through this gate over the wall and into the back area. Every unit that he can pull off doing that with is going to net him a single victory point. Sergey will also receive a single victory point when he destroys this gate. Uh, the gate itself is going to uh, basically operate similar to a building by itself. It's going to have 30 hit points because it's a fortified gate. Um, and basically, Sergey is going to be able to damage that with any light support or heavy weapon that is at least strike value 5. Similarly, all weapons that have the breaching rule will also be able to damage this gate. Sergei's force will lack a deployment zone in this area and instead will be moving onto the battlefield from turn one without any command tests required uh, along his short edge of the table. Now this will seem like a daunting task, but to help uh, make it a little bit more of a fair fight, only half of the defending forces will be able to be present along the defensive perimeter here uh, on the wall or behind, I guess whatever I choose, um, and the rest of the force will be showing up on turn two, coming from any edge that is basically in this courtyard. So I could come in from the edge of the wall right here, or the short edge, I'm sorry, the, the portion of the long edge that's within the base, or the entirety of the short edge. Um, and there will be no command tests revolving around that as well. Now the defenders are going to be basically trying to do the exact opposite of the attackers. I'm going to receive a victory point for every single one of Sergei's unit that does not make it into the base, and I'm also going to receive a victory point for every unit that I manage to destroy. Is that okay, Sergei, sitting on the end of the tea table? Applauding your demise. <laughs> Now, as far as how the terrain is going to work, the wall segments are going to be a little bit different than your conventional buildings. Now, I can't obviously be inside of these. It's just gonna have my units walking across them and using this small lip to defend myself. And as such, it's basically gonna count, it's, it's gonna be a lot like a hill that 
you also receive the negative one penalty uh, when people shoot at you, kind of like if you're in a building, and it's gonna give you two res because it's technically a fortification. But that distinction is important because that means if Sergey targets me with direct, or I'm sorry, overhead fire, he's going to have to actually hit my units directly. Normally, if this was considered a building, all he would have to do is strike the building itself and the units inside would be struck. Now, it's also important to note that these wall segments and the tower are, are going to be indestructible until I basically make some terrain that looks like walls that have been destroyed. We're not gonna worry about it right now, but to make sure that uh, his infantry can still uh, siege in places other than just the gate, any infantry unit that starts its turn off in base contact with the wall, and that's just gonna be most of the unit. So you could have half of your unit up against it. If you perform a run order, you are able to move up onto the wall. That can actually be used as a charge as well. And so uh, for your imaginations, you can just imagine that all the infantry came prepared today with like grappling hooks and grab boots. Moving down the line, the towers themselves, now these are gonna basically just work exactly like normal buildings. You can see that I have like a little pillbox window slit and there are doors on the either side, on the either side, on either side. There are also doors behind. These doors are going to allow access into the tower if I so choose, and another unit will be able to be placed on top. Now that's gonna have the normal building rules. So it's gonna be plus three to your res if the unit's in one of the towers, and it's gonna be minus one to hit if you're shooting at it. While I'm talking about access ports, it's important to note that the normal walls each have uh, ladders. So basically you can move from the normal wall uh, very easily. As for all the buildings and vehicles present within the defender zone, uh, they're gonna count as a uh, uh, building's wood, but um, I'm not gonna probably be using them. They're mostly there for fluff. Outside of the walls, the terrain is uh, pretty normal. Uh, Sergey has decided to uh, have three instances of dense terrain on his side. Looks like a uh, rubbly forest, so we're just gonna call them dense forest. So it's minus one to your agility when you're doing your difficult test to get through. It's plus two to your res. Uh, and you can't see through them unless you are on the height of these uh, towers. The walls are not tall enough to see through the dense terrain. And then we also have two instances of light forests that are just uh, going to be a uh, uh, difficult stress to get through. Uh, plus two to your res, minus two accuracy if they're being fired through because they're light area terrain. And then we also are having our, uh, our pan-human roads. Uh, anything that starts and ends its entire move on these roads can roll a D3 and move that an extra inches. So a little bit of speed boost for the attackers. So probably should have uh, destroyed more of the road before it got to my gate. This is making me nervous. The vehicle wreck, which was the last thing here. I guess I have one on my side too. We're just gonna call them as barriers. So if you're like up against them getting shot at, It'll be uh, plus two to your res. Um, it'll take a difficult terrain test to go over them. And if you fail, you can't move at all. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, we'll just have them be negative two to shoot through. And here we have the honorable Algorand forces have answered the call to defense. Uh, this is my 1,000 point Algorand combat force. And since this scenario revolves around a fort, I'm gonna call this the defense garrison. As in all Algorand combat forces, you have to have four tactical choices this time around, but you can have up to eight. You also have to have a single support choice, but you can have up to five. You finally gain access to up to a single strategic at combat level, and you can have up to two auxiliary. For this in particular force to fill in all of the tactical choices, we're going to start off with the proud commander Sojun himself, leading the troops once again, this time in Algren Assault Guard. Uh, that unit is a Algren Assault Command Squad. It is 119 points base, but I've given it a single upgrade in the form of a medical drone, uh, making the unit total 139 points. Flanked on either side, he has brought a small group of his most finest warriors, most finest. It is two Algren Assault Squads, uh, they're naked squads, so it's 120 points base, and I have not upgraded them at all. And to increase my numbers on that wall, I have included three units of AI squads. Uh, they're the normal infantry. They each have an extra uh, micro X launcher for free, but I've given each one of the squads uh, sling that ammo. That's five points for the leader's X sling and the two micro X's. So it's 15 points total, uh, meaning each one of these AI squads is 109 points. 
To give this a strong back wall, I have included two support choices. I had to have one, and each is just an Algren support team. Now, you will notice that the second team sure as heck looks like Freeborn, and they've showed up to help today, but they are uh, just accounts as. I didn't have two uh, Algren X Launcher teams specifically, but they are 38 points base. The X Launcher itself is a free upgrade. Each one of them has net ammo for five points. Each one is a spotter drone for 10 points, which means it's two support teams at 53 points apiece. Now, you will see my favorite, most new unit is going to be the heavy support team. It's my strategic choice for today. It's 97 points base. Then I have upgraded the team to have an X howitzer for 10 points. Ooh, so cool. Net ammo is once again five points, and the unit has a spotter drone for obvious reasons at 10 points, meaning that that is a 112 point strategic unit right there. To ensure that all of this overhead is going to land in the right way, uh, I have a probe shark for 40 points as my first auxiliary choice. Uh, I haven't given it any upgrades other than that though, so I get four probes. And then I also brought my favorite Algren auxiliary choice, the Medic Team. It is a 30 point unit and this time around they're just going to be rocket pistols because I didn't spend any points on them. So uh, that is a 30 point unit as is. So that means that I have uh, enough points left over to have a single uh, instance of block for five points, meaning I have 999 points total, and the army is represented by 12 order decks. For those who are about to die, we salute you. This is my four might breaching force. They'll be running across the field, screaming and trying not to die. In any 1,000 point Boromite combat force, you must have five tactical choices, you may have up to nine. You must have one support choice, you may have up to five, you may have up to one strategic choice, and you may have up to two auxiliary choices. This particular Boromite force is led by gang leader Tarek. He is represented by this big blob of gang fighters. It is a 97 point base unit, but I've added two extra gang fighters at 36 points, making it 133 points total. I have then added three separate Lava Might squads. All of them are 82 points base, but I have spent five points on each individual squad to give them all suspensor platforms, making them 87 points apiece. I have then moved on to my work gangs with heavy tractor mauls. Each one is 98 points, but I've given them all reflex armor. They gotta get across that field and not die, so they're 108 points total. I have then added two separate X launcher teams. Each one is 36 points base, but I've given each one a spotter drone for 10 points and scoot ammo this time around for five points, making them each 51 points total. I have then given my traditional Boromite steel and placed a hauler onto the field. It is 190 points base. I have spent 20 points on two separate shield drones, 10 points on a spotter drone, and 20 points on giving it two mag cannons, making it 249 points. I mean, sorry, 240 points. It's a big chunk of change, but it's hella worth it. I have then finished off my list with some spotter drones. I want my X launchers to be able to actually see the fort if they are really far away. So they're going to be super, super useful. They're 40 points total. Then I have rounded off everything with a single army option of block for five points. This entire list is represented by 11 order dice and it is 997 points total. So you can see I have basically placed most of my units in a centralized location and that is for a very specific reason. So I can only have half my forces, so I have six units on the field right now. Uh, X Howitzer and the two uh, micro X, or X launchers rather are obviously on the field first. They need to be there to be able to shoot. And then my probe shard is present along the wall. I have specifically made sure to have two on the normal wall and two above so I can see over things. Um, but that's going to be one of the most important tactical aspects of this list. Um, and then you can see I have two regular AI squads. They make more sense to have on the battlefield first because they have overhead fire themselves and mag guns. Um, but as you can see in this scenario, the defenders start off in a little bit of a risky business situation because 
the entire attacking force is arriving, but only a certain portion of the defense forces are present. Now, I did not start my guys off in the building also because Sergei is bringing special munitions, as well as having a sonic attack that we forgot about uh, mentioning in his first wave. So I have to make sure that I'm in a position where I'm not gonna easily be struck inside of a building. So they're occupying small portions of the wall. The sonic attack. We're using the exact same chart that you'll find in scenario number four, hold the line, and it is going to help me soften up Kevin's hard exterior. First, I'll be rolling for Kevin's X howitzer And I roll a two. Which nothing, just nothing. Whew. Damn. Do my freeborn next. The guys that are helping me out. <laughs> Five. Nothing. That is one pin marker. Okay. Then for Kevin's actual algorithm support team. Eight. Eight. That's D3 pins and the unit goes down. Oh, lucky. I must roll a D3 for Kevin's algorithm. And I roll a three. Brutal. So they have three pins and, and they down. go down. Next will be Kevin's AI squads for these guys first. That's a five, that's so that's one, one pin. pin. And for this unit, that's wow. a five, so that's okay. one pin. Dang, right, really good sonic attack. Uh, I should roll, just in case I roll a 10, I'm gonna go for the uh the I don't think they can there. be targeted. Oh! Wait, I, don't, I don't think the probes can be targeted. Yeah, the unit takes D3 pin, suffers D6 hits. Well, I only rolled a one, so hopefully I'll destroy one probe. It wasn't quick enough on the draw. All probes have four toughness, and I'm dead. So I can just choose one then? Yep. You, you're the one I shot at. Cow, fight, oh no. The Boromite invaders have a Staggering 11 order dice versus the six order dice brought by the Algorand's first wave of defense. Let us see how this goes. First die, the fourth FIA! How? What? Buddha thunk makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Coming onto the field with my scout probe shards, I want to be able to get as much line of sight as I can. Makes sense. The probes, final position. Uh, Sergey put them in uh, terrain as much as he could because that way they have a little bit of a res bonus. Boromite, in axe launcher approaches. I am firing off a scoot round, attempting to throw a hunky wrench into Kevin's terrain, mm. placing it right there. Only once. That's a miss with a six. So now it scatters the full D10. Uh, probably best to roll it like here. Yeah, sure, go for it. Scattering. Oh, Ooh, 10, 10 inches, inches directly not. back. Yeah, that's good. I'm gonna see if it clips. It no, I will. But... Yeah, look, you're good. Pew! Oh, that was honestly so close that it was totally viable to do that. <laughs> so, but no, the thing is though, is that that is a scoot. So get your little scoot token. And so there is a scoot round right on top of there. So we're a little bit confused on how this would work because Kevin is within three inches of this scoot marker. If you're just but looking at it straight from above down. If you're looking at it down. horizontally. But if we're looking at it vertically, he's farther than three inches from the scoot modifier in a diagonal manner. Because of the height of our terrain that we specifically have. Exactly. So we're, we're honestly unsure whether it will affect Kevin or not affect Kevin. So we're just gonna go ahead and do a 50-50 roll for it. Yeah, Rex rolls. We're just having fun. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We're having fun either way. So yeah. five six. or above, it'll affect. I mean, sorry, six or above, it'll affect Kevin. Under that, it will not. So it's it, only one. It, yeah, it will affect. Which, him. in all honesty, in our deliberations, I was telling Sergey, I don't know if my point was able to be. I, I, I <laughs> so, honestly okay. don't know. If so, anybody has a solid answer to this, please let us know in the comments. Yes. So the scoot ammo has landed. It is persistent, and that means that this. X launcher specifically will either have to run or do a rally order. Ha! Boromite, same order. I am basically doing the exact same order, but I'm shooting at the other team this time. Mm. Placing my scoot round right in the center here. Seeing if I hit, it's just ones. Nope. And then scattering. Oh, five, Ooh, inches. five inches. This might hit somebody. I don't know. I don't know if it'll be close enough. I know it's kind of right in the middle. Unfortunately, I am dead center between these two units, so it's going to affect nobody, but it might persist and just be annoying. Borman! The hauler is flying onto the field, getting right about there, but I get an extra D3 due to the pan-human roads. Damn it. <laughs> two. two! That's not bad. Getting that better traction. Out there. Yeah. Ha! 
Or maybe yeah. Once again, I am doing a run order, getting to right about there, and I am rolling a d3 every time in the gutter. That was a one. That was a okay, yeah. one. <laughs> so one extra inch. Yeah. So you got three extra inches this turn. Oh, Grin. I will ready my first guard unit with an ambush order, but I must pass a command check on a seven or lower to take the order. Seven exactly. I'm good. I'll grin again. Once again, I'm gonna place the guards on ambush so I can hopefully catch some of Sergei's guys in bad positions. And I rolled a six, so I'm good. Whew, bore my Cry havoc and let loose the rock dogs of war. Yeah. I'm sprinting on with a lava mite handler, his sprint check. Abysmal. Is a fail as usual. <laughs> That's not abysmal, but yeah. their, their agility just sucks. <laughs> so, okay. Now, uh, I am obviously going to uh, activate one ambush. Now, whereas sling that ammo is very good, and I could put a third pin if I hit him even once on his unit of lava mines, I am gonna use regular munitions because he is going to be almost within 10 inches of me in the next turn, meaning that I won't actually be able to use my normal uh, D, like three hits uh, if I don't do it right now. So I'm actually gonna fire both rounds, regular munitions, and I get two mag guns to go with because the leader just has a pistol. Holy crap, I'm within 30 inches. That means that my leader can't shoot his pistol. That's ridiculous. I will aim at, ooh, that's good positioning, Sergey. I'll aim at uh, the backmost dude because there's not really a centralized location uh, with one shot. And then I'll aim at the frontmost dude with the other one. Okay. And then uh, I'm at no negatives other than minus two for overhead and minus one for being um, uh, at long range. So I'm gonna hit on a one, two, or three. So I miss on a six. It's gonna deviate just a D5. So five was the intention number. Um, so that means it's what? Uh, uh, miss. Three inches, right? Oh yeah, because it's in advance. Uh, I don't know if it's rounded down or rounded up. It's rounded down. Oh wait, no, it's not rounded up. It's all. a D5, yeah. yeah. So I think that misses, yeah. So that misses the first one. And the second one, once again, hits on a one, two, or three. So it is also a miss. So I must deviate it, which is centered across that one. So 10 inches, so five inches. Hey, check if it hits the hauler. You never know. No, there's no way. That was over the front one, yeah. It could, no, no it can't. <laughs> never mind. Unfortunately for Kevin, that's two whips. Yep, so I missed both times. That's such crap. Uh, but yeah, I still got some mag guns. Mag guns hitting on five, mag pistol hitting on threes. So both my mag guns hit, but my mag pistol misses. That is strike value one. Take one on my leader, one on a rock dog. Yes, the leader fails. He's good. Oh, so close though. Algorithm. Huh. I'm just gonna use this opportunity to send a dice at the probe. So run order for the probe, but they're not actually moving. Whoop. All right again. Recovery order with the guys in the transport. On that dice. Algorin. So my support team that is affected by the scoot, I'm gonna try to run away from it because that's all I can do or do a rally. So, oh, I roll a oh, nine. I do remove down. the pin though, but you do go down. Or my, I'm punting that dice, doing a recovery order. Or my good. Doing a sprint check with my leader Tarek. And he fails just like everyone else. Wee wee. That is one pin for the fat Boromites. We're down to two and two, except for we're absolutely not. I've been screwed up this whole time because I thought the X Howard was mod two for some reason. And to my dismay, it absolutely is not. So I actually just lost one of our dice and my army only has 11 total, not 12. So let's see how that goes for me. Ooh, boy, I really wish the howitzer would have been, oh, it's still me. <laughs> so how great it is. Firing with the X Howitzer then, which is my last unit. Um, I'm going to aim at his Lava Mites because they are a nice soft target. Aim it at the Handler once again. I'm only hitting on a one, two, or three. And I got a six. Whoa! <laughs> Don't mind me. You can't see that off screen, but Kevin just rolls <laughs> my hauler across the field. <laughs> it's just hit a real bad speed bump. It really deviates a D5 and that's Four inches this way, which I think 
Probably still hits, right? I think. I don't know. I can't tell. You tell me. But either way, it's a D. Oh, yeah, that definitely hits. So then I'm just going to, real quick, because this is a uh, overhead two, and then another one would appear this way. So, so it yeah, 100%. Hits. Yeah. Cool. So I cause a lot of hits. D10 to be exact. Eight hits. Oh, yes. No. <laughs> well, you have four guys, so each one of them has to take a strike value to hit. So Lava Might number one at six is to pass. <laughs> Dead. Dead Lava Might number two. Dead. Dead. Lava Knight number three. Good. Five. Okay. Handler. And handler. Dead. Oh. Can't re roll two. Yeah. Oh. oh my god. So that causes three pins, or okay. so one, an extra pin. Yeah. So you have three pins. You've lost more than half your unit. What's your leadership I on this? I believe my leadership is only like six. Um, yeah. Gone. All right. Well, you just deleted just a unit. Destroyed a unit. Damn. Well, I whimpered havoc and put the dogs of war back in their cage. Woo. Kevin has slaughtered this unit Boom. just mercilessly. <laughs> Jesus. Wow! Two dice for the Morites! Through the loose body parts of their compatriots, they <laughs> burst through the plasma fire to sprint onto the field. I have a Lava Mite squad here, and on the other side, I also have a Lava Mite squad. Sprint check for that one. Oh, oops, sorry. <laughs> it's a nine, so nine, they fail. So one pen. And sprint check for these guys. Uh, also a nine, so they fail as well. And then uh, I have one ambush loader left over. This is your last two units, so I'll just uh, make this a, a super kill zone and fire at those guys. I will be doing the exact same thing my other unit did. I will be firing all my weapons into the Lava Mites next to his hauler. I'm going to have two overhead that are going to hit on a one, two, or three. I'm going to use regular ammo, and then I get a uh, pistol and two mag guns as well. I really don't want to have the hauler absorb any shots, so I'm going to aim at this lava mite off to the side. So I'm going to hit on a one, two, or three. I hit on, or I don't hit on a nine, so it's going to scatter. No inches, so one inch. Whoop, okay, it's going to so hit him still. Hit. And then the second one hits on a one or a two as well. One, right. so hits directly. So each of those hits generates a D3. So three total, and then real quick, uh, my mag guns hit on a five, my pistol hits on a three. So once again, everything hits uh, with the mag guns. So he has two strike value one shots and uh, three strike value zero. I'm specifically putting one of the luckies on the lava mite. Okay. So uh, right one of the lava mites will take a, a strike value one and a strike value zero. Dead. Oh, he is dead. Your leader takes a single strike value zero. Dead. That's nice. good. And then one more lava mite taking a strike value zero. Wait, yeah. two more lava mites. Wait, because I caused you. five hits. But so you hit with two bad guns, right? Mm -hmm. So where's that? Other oh, hit? it's wherever you want it on your leader. Oh. You just, you know, yeah, he's just saved on the leader. Is what you can say. Oh, yeah, there, yeah. So you're good. Okay. So now your two other lava mites each have to take a zero okay. hit. Yes! No, they're both. Oh, wait, wait, he's got armor eight. Yeah. Yep, you're good. So I take a pin and lose a lava mite. <laughs> and a pin. The Boromites have surged forward, but one by one they're being picked off by Algorand Fire. However, Scoot ammunition has wrought chaos amongst the Algorand ranks. Both my X Launcher teams are down. The one with three pins needs to get a five or lower to get up. I got a six, so it stays down, but I lose a pin. These folks have an eight or lower. Seven, they're good, so I get the dice back. But that won't matter unless I somehow get rid of these scoots. So one through five, it stays in play. Six through 10, it goes out of play. So the one closest to the gate is still in play. The one on top of the car is out of play. Damn, that's the one I want. Whoop. The one I didn't want. <laughs> Going into turn two, the rest of the defenders are going to be arriving. So I am now at a 10 on the Algorand side, and there, since we have lost that order dice, it is 10 on the uh, Boromite side as well. Turn two. Whoop. Starting with Boromite. Putting my best foot forward, I've got my X launcher firing another scoot round. Mm -hmm. Placing it right here. I'm only going to hit on ones once again. And uh, uh, no, uh, it's definitely yeah. only ones. Uh, but then uh, scattering. I can't see. Two it. inches. Two inches, so that's definitely still gonna hit. 
They have been mightily scouted. Eldrin. Ah. My ex howitzer is going to fire while it's still viable, and I'm going to aim at those dastardly lava mites that were so brazen as to run across this last killing field. I am once again going to be aiming at the backmost lava mite, because once again, I don't want the hauler to be absorbing rounds from it. So I only am gonna, I'm gonna hit on a one, two, or three. So I miss, but I'm only gonna deviate a D8, or D5, sorry. So three inches is gonna be like over here, but let's see what I think this. it's still gonna hit. I think it's still gonna hit too. It yeah, doesn't okay, really it hit definitely 100%. hits. So, uh, and just so that you guys are aware, that's because it landed here, but then another template is generated right here because the howitzer is overhead times two. Yes. So I'm gonna cause another D10 strike value two hits. Four this time. That's not terrible. So each one of them gets a strike value two hit. I'm good across the board. Yeah. Oh, no, I know. Leader dies. He's good. Leader so good across hit. the board, but Lucky. one hit. What? Woo! It is the boar mite. But I really want to cause some collateral damage while you're farther away from me. So I'm actually going to block. It never works. Sh you shake that around. Oh, well, I just launched a dice of mine outside of it. I'll bet you can I feel your own hard. You can feel your own hands warms on it. It's my. Sweat. It's been imprinted. Yes. Damn it. <laughs> My Alvarin that definitely looked like Freeborn are gonna do a fire order in this case because I do not like his scoot ammunition and I wanna be able to shoot with my other guys. So I'm gonna use net ammo on his X launcher team. <laughs> I'm only gonna hit on ones. I don't hit, I deviate. Yay, two inches. So I still hit for sure. Causes a D3 pins plus one, so two. So I just gave it three pins. So you must pass an order test or potentially go down. Oops. Oh, you go down, my friend. They're not out of the game yet, but at least they're out of this turn. Four might. I am advancing six inches due to the road. Oh, all these drones just magically appeared in here. Yes, I forgot to put them on the field, <laughs> but I do have two shields and a spotter. Yeah. And I'm firing uh, both my rounds into uh, Kevin's unscooted unscooted unit. scooted unit. Oh, please save me, walls. Hitting on fours. One hit. One hit, spotter drone. One hit. Okay, so strike value five. I get plus two for my uh, being on the wall. So I am at sevens up to nines, brought down to oh, fours. Take out your leader, I'm assuming. Uh, yeah. Not good. Good, damn. I get a pin though. Algrid, I'm gonna block that. You do it. Right, take your hand all the way out. <laughs> yes! I have advanced up the field six inches once again oh, through the room. So close. Are you firing at these four guys again? Oh yeah, I'm trying to double pin them. Okay. Fours. One, one hit, hit. One whiff. Two, Two hits. hits. Okay, so this is probably where someone's gonna die. I got a, a fours to save. So one guy dies, my leader's fine. Next dice out of the bag. Four right again. Run the sprint using this boar mate here. I'm on sevens to pass my command. Two, good. you're good. But uh, sprint check. Hey, finally. Yeah, yeah, look at that. I have reached a position of very, very close to the wall. Ooh. Kevin, are you getting sweaty palms? Mm, that's quite quite yet. Next order dice out of the bag is Algren. Before one of my original guard units is wiped out, I'm going to try to do a fire order into those lava mites that are right below. I do have to pass a leadership test of six or lower. Four. Boop. So I'm firing with my leader's X sling armed with sling net ammo, and then a mag gun and my two guys that have micro X's are actually firing them direct fire. So they're basically three mag guns and I'm hitting all across the board on fives. Ugh. So I miss unfortunately twice. But I hit you with the sling net ammo, so you immediately get two pins, and you have to take a test on a single model that has a strike value one hit. Now I'll take out my leader. Fail. He's good. Pass. Algorit. My final AI squad is going to come on with an advance order, so they are basically arriving from some other segment of the fortress wall, and they are going to be firing their weapons into this normal unit of gangers. Uh, I'm going to use two micro X launchers with regular ammo, and I'm gonna use two mag guns. 
Overhead is first, and I will aim directly at the Boromite leader himself. So I'm gonna only hit on a one, two, or a, I'm sorry, one or two, because I'm at long range now. Oh, I hit him directly. In the second shot, nine. So that's gonna, nine, that does not hit. And I'm gonna deviate a full D10. Two inches, oh. <laughs> so I hit you with both. So real quick, my mag guns, they're going to be hitting on fours. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, fours. One hit. So now I have I've caused a single strength one attack and then those two hits with the bombs, whoo, cause five strike value zero. So you have five strike value zero, one strike value one. That's one for everybody but one of your guys because you have seven total. Strike value one going on my leader. Yes! Oh, oh my goodness. No! Oh, I killed three of them and I killed the leader. Well, I didn't see that coming. Uh, so Kevin has killed one, two, three, four Boromites. Well, they've lost more than half their units, so a command test on seven. Oh my is it, god. It, what is it? It's an eight. It would have been an eight or a ten, so the god unit is bless. gone, dude. I, I'm, I'm just, where is this luck coming from? <laughs> Concord, damn it, Algorand. <laughs> that's, that's fair. <laughs> My Algorand Assault sprint forward onto the battlefield. I must pass a sprint test. My agility is five. Yeah, six. So I take a pin, but I also... Oh, you just scouted yourself. You've been scout. <laughs> so I do get a pin for money, but I do get an extra D3 because of the road rule. One inch. So. Now, Sergey was astute to tell me that I am I'm basically running up to the scoot ammo, but my guy's shooting is so god awful that I don't really care. If I have to run next turn, it's probably better because literally he's gonna be here to kick my butt, and that might just disappear. So, not that worried. Algorithm. So my next assault squad that's off the field is also gonna run on. So I'm just gonna do everything this time. So I get an extra D3 because I'm running, running and I did a sprint, so I'm gonna do a sprint check. So I do not get a pin and it's an extra inch. So I'm actually gonna just be sandwiched right up against him. Ooh, that's a scary hive of assault troops. Woo! Four of my... It's time! We're charging out of the hollow and breaking down this gate. Charge! Sprint check. Of course. Damn it. <laughs> Doesn't really matter though. Unless you don't get as many pins as the, the wall in this melee. <laughs> <laughs> the wall just like closes in on you. You're like, oh no, it's not a bad guy. You don't get out of the way in time. I'm wielding heavy tractor mauls. They are breaching weapons. So every time I hit, I will do three damage to this wall and they have effective range 10. So for my point blank shots, I'm hitting on fives. Well, actually fours because I sprinted. Terrible. Well then, I've so done, well, I've done you three damage. Three damage to the 30 hit point gate. My strength is six, up to seven for having charged, up to eight for having hand weapons. I miss once. So that is three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, doesn't matter, 30, 33, so. so I literally just like blew the gate off yeah, his hinges. So, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Bang. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll work on our, our CGI graphics. Anybody, anybody a CGI artist? Ooh, but Al Gore is ready. Consolidation move, I've just moved a little bit inward, so I'm within his minimum range with that exit, let's see. Mm, good call. I've scored one victory point for pulverizing that gate, making it one to two. And now, ha, Kevin will bring it. Commander Sojun has finally showed up, running along the perimeter of the wall. He is advancing from the field and is going to fire three plasma carbines into the workers that have just violently busted through the front defenses. Three shots hitting on sixes. All four, all, all three hit. Okay. So strike value two, so you have five to save. Two dead, but you get a reroll. Good, Fine. so one guy dies. And you get a pit. Boy. Going to run and sprint with these guys. First to command check. I pass. You're good. And so a sprint pass. check. I put it right back. <laughs> as usual. <laughs> I feel like the Alger or the uh, board might need a little bit better. 
<laughs> Agility, it's so mean. Okay, so they're about, they're getting close. They're gnashing their teeth. Concord, Algorand, damn it. Every time, it's blue. <laughs> Dr. Quinn and the medicine man doing a regular run in. I normally would get an extra D3, but I don't really care, so. You're not gonna stand. Okay, cool. They're gonna stand off to the side a little bit. But yeah, they're gonna run right here um, because in this position, or I'm sorry, right up here, because in this position, they're within five inches of everybody. So they're gonna give their uh, medic reroll. Algren, I'm gonna basically just, the uh, only thing I can really do with this unit right here is run into here, and then I'll be able to shoot it over everybody still. So yeah, I'll just do that. I could rally and just see if this will disappear, but I might as well just move up here and call it even. Okay. Oh, wait, there's only one over in dice. It's my probes. I'm not moving my probes. So, uh, two more blades? It gets two. Just do a run, not run order with my probes. Mm-hmm. And I'm doing a regular run order with my Mites in the holler. I don't want to get a pin on myself, so I'm just gonna- That makes sense. Run right out to here, because they'll be able to sprint no problem next turn. All right, ready to go. Whoa, an epic turn, and I'm so glad we built this fort. This is so fun. Down order here, and I'm good. Boop. I have a X, uh, X launcher team down. Two, I'm good. Now we have one, but two scoot rounds. So one to five, they stick around. So the closest one in the middle of everything. <laughs> Bless America. It's good. That one on the edge of the wall there burns out with a tent. Okay. The road to Fort Theta Epsilon is strewn with Boromite body parts, but they have breached the gate. Will they make it through? Turn three will be the most bloody turn and decide this battle is my guess. There are nine now on the Boromites and 11 on the Concord. <laughs> <laughs> What's the wrong Algorand, It's your fault, you keep saying it. <laughs> Turn three. Die one. Come on, Boromite. Ah! Boromite! Yes! I'm using my unpinned unit to charge Kevin's one pin unit. I must roll a sprint check. Yay! Fail as usual, and Kevin must roll a reaction test. Yes, because unbeknownst to you, I haven't announced it yet, but I'm going to do a stand and shoot order with them, uh, which I have a 60% chance. Then you fail. Ah! <laughs> Never Why do you even react anymore? I try. It's okay. So I have two <laughs> pins. The Boromites have arrived with one pin, but I have two pins because I always try to react that way. So uh, we're going to do point blank shooting. I have to re-roll my hits and I am shooting all across the board with uh, the uh, mag, or, I'm sorry, yeah, mag repeaters. And then he is using his tractor mauls. I am hitting on fours. And I did yes. do well. I did get a lucky though, so I'll put it on non later. Strike value three. Okay. So they are at uh, res seven normally, so fours. So I'm dead. So I cause one hit and I take a pin from that for being shot. My return shooting is unfortunately subject to two pins and my uh, rapid fire rule. So I'm only hitting on twos with 10 dice. So I hit twice, but he sprinted. So I do have to re-roll. So nothing. I'm once again hitting Kevin on eights and I have strike value three. So I missed zero times. Okay, pull those dice up. So that's 10 hits on my guys. That's strike value three each, so I'm due. But I'm using my D spinners. I have jacked their uh, strike value up to two. I get two strikes or a piece at sixes to hit. So I only missed three times. So each one of your guys has to take a strike value two hit, and each one of my guys has to take two, more than two strike value threes. Oh, so no, I, I hit you, what? 10 yeah. times. Oh, 10 times, yeah. So I have taken 10 strike value three hits. I'm basically doomed. I'm only on four, so these two guys, so he is dead. I do have a medic reroll, so I might as well use that right now. So he's still dead. That guy's dead. This guy's dead. And my leader is dead. Oh wait. No, is he? Ha! 
He's alive! <laughs> he lives to soldier on! My leader is alive, so now you must take five strike value, two hits, you only have five saves. So, it's a 50-50. One on each guy. Yes. Ooh, yes! I killed three of them. Yep. Okay, so I killed three of them, causing three pins. You killed three of my guys, causing three pins. So I still lose, and I have six pins. So my leadership is on a one or a two. Nope. No. Nope. So right. that unit's dead. Whew, Blood right. spatters the ground in the swirling melee. I would have really liked the initiative on that one. Rough business. It's me. My axe howitzer is firing at this unit with uh, the full lava mites. Uh, three pins. Right over the main dude. And I'm gonna be hitting on a uh, one, two, or a three. Roll a 10, you second crap. Nope, so it misses, but I do deviate. So it's three inches this way, so it's so, still yeah, hitting you. And then it's whoosh, flipping over this way. So, so it just hits that one unit and D10 times. Yep. The D10 strike value, two hits. One! Oh, no. <laughs> there you go, bro. So strike value two. I'm good. He's good. But it's a command test on uh five or lower. Yes! So they do go down. Alright. Joining the Frankus, I have my lava mites. They're doing a run and a sprint. They must first pass a command check on seven. They're good. Yeah, they lose a pin, pin, but it's a sprint check. Oh, oh they get two pins. Rough! Charging these assault troops here. I'm hoping I can do some damage. Ah, okay. I'm going to react. Don't you do no, it. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> you, you shut up. <laughs> Should I react though? No, you sprinted. I'm not reacting. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help myself. That's a psychopath oh. reactions, dude. I have my lava spit and a plasma pistol. The lava spit is accuracy seven, pushed down to four, and the plasma pistol is uh, accuracy five, pushed down to two. Hmm. Yay! That's one hit. Lava spit. It's still strike value three, right? Uh, yeah. Damn. No, it might be two. So I will. It is two. Yeah, I'm gonna take it on a normal guy. And I fail, but I do have a medic roll. I'm good. So I do take a pin from that. So now I have one pin total. Now the algorithm will return with a fiery fuselage of mag round repeating. <laughs> I'm sticking with it. Four to hit. Oh, terrible. Two hits. No, three hits, okay. But I have to re-roll them because you sprinted. Oh, thank God. So I still have two hits. Uh, the, the pin is the most important thing. Yeah. Okay, uh, so res test. Yes! I'm good. No. But uh, my command test, because I have four pins, so a 50-50. Oh, oh no, oh, 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 that's terrible. I go down, I go down, so you get to strike first in close combat. Mm. I must press this advantage, my D-spinners firing with their, obviously I'm uh, uh, boosting the plasma grenades. I'm sure there's instances where you want to boost the armor, but I just don't see it up as often. So sixes to hit. Oh, that was way better this time. Woo, Sergey, you only have three individuals. Mm -hmm. Holy crap. So that means one of your units is taking the strike value six. The other two are taking strike value four. Okay. So I'll take it on my leader. Strike value six. Dead. He's dead, but. Dead. Dead. And uh, so it's two strike value fours. Yeah, so you just need two fours or lower. Dead. 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 Oh my oh. God. Oh. Uh, ah. Well, that hurts me deep in my heart. Um, but Kevin has slain this unit and they didn't even get to strike. My Algren simply consolidate a little bit to the right so that they can run guard for Dr. Quinn and Medicine Man, the two doctors who uh, could potentially still save lives. Algren. Okay, the end, we can see it. We can see it. I'm gonna do a run um, with my guys right here and just run into his dudes with two. They do have a pill. Yes, so let me get a dice. I'm gonna pass on a test of seven. Oh, Woo. so I lose my pen and I'm going to charge your dudes. Try to fill in that the Algorin are going to use their bodies to physically create a new gate. The gate of Algar, <laughs> stronger than oh, steel. <laughs> 
So this was a sprint because I wanted to survive, but guess what? In true Kevin faction, fashion, I, ran, I rolled a 10. So I get two pins because I just yep. can't win. So we both have two pins, which means everybody's hitting on threes, except for me who's hitting on twos because I have a rapid fire gun. Um, I have five guys with mag repeaters. He has four dudes with heavy tractor mauls. So I get 10 shots, but it's a strike value too. I'm starting to question the uh, validity of uh, mag repeaters. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> so I missed completely, but it is what it is. So you get four shots to go back. Oh. Yo, threes. So you yes. Get once, I... you have to reroll because I sprinted. You won. Oh. <laughs> okay, uh, I figured that was gonna happen. Now for more of the meat and potatoes and the assault phase. This is what people pay for. This is why we're all here. Yep, those D spinners are full of Frothing plasma rage. I'm gonna be hitting on not sixes, but sevens this time, because I'm the charger. So two tens and a nine. Oh, I will take it. That's pretty good. That's actually really good. Holy crap. Also, if we ever make an Antares themed band, it's 100% going to be called Frothing, Frothing plasma, plasma Rage. Frothing Pack Rage. Ah! <laughs> I am hitting on sevens. No, you're not. You yeah. Have a hand weapon. I know, but my strength is six base. Oh. Still not very good though. Uh, so I hit you four times. With That's not terrible. Three. That's enough to scare me a little bit. So now, um, so the four hits on my on me. But let's see you deal with these. So you have four individuals. Mm -hmm. So that means ah, it's actually not that bad. Yeah. So that means that uh, the dead, dead. Uh, yeah, dead. Dead. Good. Good. No, he is dead because it's seven minus. Yeah. So oh, oh, God, they're all but dead. Let's see who gets to survive to gloat because it might not be a whole lot of people because I have only fours to uh, save as well. I have one medic. So, unfortunately, you've definitely killed one of my assault troopers. Ah, two. So, two died to get the rest of them killed. Well, a lot of death. Uh, there's limbs flying everywhere, blood is spattered. Across the multiverse. It would sound heinous, dude. My guys have literal grenade launchers on their arms. Like, I know. There's like grenades and I'm like, flying everywhere. Like, dr drilling people to death. Like, this would be uh, like a R rated movie. Oh, like, for sure. <laughs> well, what do you think, Sergey? Are we, is it beating a dead horse now? Yeah, so mathematically, I cannot win. Uh, Kevin has too damn many points. The Boromite's efforts were strong, and the gate was definitely breached. But its warriors were not strong enough to break the proud fighters of Algor. Though many of his personal retina of assault squad troopers were killed that day by giant horrible drills, no less, Soju proudly looks across the battlefield, having defended Theta Epsilon base from the marauding Boromites. The Boromites will have their revenge! Bring it. Bring it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> balance. Holy crap! What a fun game. That was that was really fun. <laughs> oh my god! First of all, I'm sorry it's taken us this long to do a four battle report, but it's yeah. just like. I mean, if this would have gone six turns, I'm sure you can tell from the lighting that it's now nighttime, and yeah. so it's just like. I don't know, sometimes it's just hard to do these really, really long They take reports. a long time to film, but yeah, I think I'm it's totally worth it. it. This yeah. was a, an absolute blast. Um, so we, 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 threw this, yeah, we threw this scenario together uh, today, uh, taking a lot of other people's ideas and kind of building them. Well, not today, but well, yeah, but over the course of a week, week or so. Yeah. Um, but I think, it, I think it went really well. This is our first playtest of the scenario, so you're seeing our process kind mm -hmm. of unfolding here. I do think that, uh, so Boromites are fast. Correct. Um, I think that maybe other armies will struggle to ever make it to the fort if it's this far away. I think maybe yeah. we could put it like you six to, to 10 inches It's forward. 48 inches, correct? You have yeah, to it's 48, 48 inches, inches, which is easy for Boromites because you can 20, 20, 20. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for other people, it might get a little on the hair. But that's only for their non-vehicular units. That's true, yeah. yeah that's true. Put someone in a vehicle, 
you can move 20 inches both turns so that if you're using transports, which honestly, I could see I mean, you should where you could have two transports launching out. Oh yeah, Because once you got your mailing units through that gate, mm -hmm. it turned into a much different game. Oh, absolutely. Because there was a slaughter happening. Yeah. But um, you do always have to run the risk of someone like, now Algorand is definitely the most incredible the, the, overhead yeah. in the whole game. And if someone would have told me going into this fight that one shooting oh attack from a normal AI squad, and normal AI squad using normal strike value zero ammunition, could kill a seven strong board by Ganger, I would have never said yes. Yeah, but, that's why. Uh, so there was a lot of good luck on my part. But uh, yeah. but yeah, no, I think that uh, factions that weren't utilizing heavy amounts of transportation would have a hard time getting there. But it might just be six inches. It might be six, the, uh, the yeah, like six, be six, like six inches to 10 closer. inches. I, I would test six inches, I would test 10 inches. Yeah. Uh, anything more than that, I think we're, we'd be getting into a hairy zone. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, either way, just from the fun fact of like, like even if this is a little bit off kilter, I would have just as much fun setting this whole table up again. Like, oh, yeah, it was such a blast. Yeah. Setting it up, letting you be the defenders for a turn uh, yeah. and just kick mm -hmm. the crap out of me because that was fun to sell. That but, was such uh, a good time. But yeah, yeah, so I think that that was cool. And we're going to try to do, uh, this is like our, our tiptoeing into the forts. We're going to try to do a few more fort battles mm -hmm. here soon. Well, because we can configure, if you you should if you haven't, you should watch our modular fort video. We'll put a link in so, the corner. I'm not sure where it'll show up, but Ooh, it'll be like, like, somewhere. <laughs> Or in the description below. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's probably better. But yeah, it is a modular fort, so it can be set up with a fort in the center. It can be a set up uh, on the short end, like like short orientation, like we have. But you can do it long orientation. There's a lot of different ways of doing it. It's just the scenarios. But we have we had a lot of ideas from um, fans as far as like varied scenarios. I think we had like basically like three or four ideas given to us, and they all seemed really fun. So we might try them. We don't know, but it was really cool overall. Mm -hmm. If you like this content, the easiest way to support our channel is to like the video, leave a comment, and if you love it enough, subscribe as well. You know you want to, but if you want to support the channel in a, a, a bigger way, you can use the affiliate link in the description below. Uh, that is an affiliate link with Warlord's web store. Anything you get, small commission to us. But if you want to support us in the best possible way, go ahead and join our Patreon campaign. Even a single dollar pledge really, really goes a long way with the channel. And on that note, we have a brand new tabletop men at arms! Yosef Achman. You probably know him from his bear wrestling career. He's got 10 wins and two ties, but we won't hold that against him. His bear fighting strength will be added to the fold and increase our power tenfold. <laughs> We would also like to take this opportunity to thank our awesome tabletop lords and ladies. John Roberts, the illustrious captain of Team Sergey. He is the captain of Team Sergey. Damn you, John Roberts. But at the same time, thanks, thanks John, John Roberts. Roberts. Also, Nick Hobbs, so cool. Love you, brother. Elizabeth Allen, who is definitely not my mom. It's definitely his mom. I don't confirm or deny that. <laughs> and last but not least, Will Connell, also just a great guy. We appreciate you folks support each and every day. We cannot tell you how much we appreciate it. And on that note, we will see you on the tabletop and probably in a fort. Fort Vivo! Fort Vivo! Vivo? Vivo! Why did you pull? You just, you just <laughs> like grimaced like I was going to strike you. I don't abuse him. He does. Often. He does. I lost, so I have to go in the closet and eat the fish heads now. Yes. Get in there. Yeah.